another episode. Ryan and Kevin here with KSMMA, and today we have on Chris Breezy, the future Brown, who is coming off a recent third-round finish. Chris, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? I'm Pretty doing good. good. So, first, before we start on everything, I just want to know, how did you come up with the nickname Breezy? Um, everyone just calls me Breezy all the time. Um, even back in high school, people would call me Breezy, and then... Um, the way I fight, people call it breezy because of the way I move and everything. I like that. Okay. And do you, do you enjoy, you like that nickname, Breezy? Oh, yeah. I think it's fitting, especially yeah. the way I, I fight. Yeah, it's definitely. I cool like to breeze through the fight. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a cool nickname and everything. And uh, how about your last three fights? You know, you went out there, you finished two out of three opponents. The other one was a decision, but you still won. Is that the kind of year you expected to have? Yeah, um, I wanted to get back on track uh, and just uh, get uh, get back to my old ways, get back to finishing fights. No doubt. And, like, after your win back in you know, January, what's going through your head? Like, you go out there, you finish him. It seemed like when you saw you hurt him, you, like, you it, like did you, like, see, like, oh, I got to go for the kill? Is that what you were Oh, doing? yeah. I was like, oh, there's, there's this blood in the water. Yeah. Shark mode. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And after that, what were you thinking? Did you think, like, the title shot would be next for you in LFA, or were you thinking something else? Yeah, um, if I fight for LFA again, it'll be for the belt. Okay. Uh, right now, I was just seeing um, what, what are the options, and they got to figure out everything on their end. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, a lot of opportunities going on right now, so we'll see what, yeah. what happens. So, Chris, are you in? Uh, are you in talks with any other promotions, or do you feel like your next fight will be in the LFA? Um, you know, my manager's doing his thing. He's talking to everybody, doing um, you know his due diligence. So, uh, just waiting to see what what's the best opportunity going forward. So yeah, it's been a pretty crazy uh, past three fights for you. How much credit do you give it to uh, Jackson Wink, Jim? Uh, I give it a lot of credit uh, just being able to go in there and, and push with the guys that I have in there. Um, I got a lot of good training partners. You know, I got some of the best coaches in the world. So um, the more time I spend in there, the more I get, uh, the better I get. Yeah. How, how long have you been at Jackson Wink now? I have been a part of the team like almost six years okay. five years almost six years so like you 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 and the coaches like you're pretty good friends now and everything like you know each other oh yeah that's, yeah me and holly call wink papa wink <laughs> <laughs> that's a good nickname too but yeah. uh we know yeah we know there's a lot of great mma fighters in that gym and is there anyone specific you've been training with these past few camps um, a lot of my time spent, um, got Christian Edwards, uh, light heavyweight for Bellator, uh, Chaos Williams, uh, welterweight for UFC. Um, he's, he just hit me up. He's about to come out here, I think next week. Okay. So he could train with me. Um, uh, who else we got? Uh, we got a, just like a, a ton of killers out here. We got a bunch of, uh, wrestlers. We got a bunch of strikers. Uh, there's just so many of my teammates that um, uh, Josh Streaker just had a fight. Uh, this is just a lot of different bodies and, you know, all the different people we have come in and out um, all the time. So it's, I get a good mix of bodies in there. You know, I was just curious, like during a grappling and all that, do you get to like work with like everybody? Cause I know like Holly Holm, you know, Michelle Waters and all them, they're, they're really good in grappling. Like do you get to work with them and learn from them too. Oh, yeah. Um, I always do sessions with them. Um, I'm one of Holly's main partners, so whenever she needs any drilling or anything, um, she hits me up and we can grapple. We, um, I'm her main striking partner most of the time. I emulate whoever she's going against. Um, me and Michelle, we mess around. There's a big weight difference there, but we still mess around and she, she gets her stuff in there. Uh, but we, we got a lot of bodies and I go with everybody because um, – uh, you know, size doesn't really matter when it comes to jujitsu. It's about mostly about skill. Yeah, and I'm sure you're learning a lot from those two and everyone else there. And I just wanted to ask you this one, actually. Uh, recently, we heard the news how John Jones isn't with the gym anymore. Uh, 
What are your thoughts on that? Is some is he someone you trained with a lot when he was at the gym with you? Yeah, uh, me and John have a long history. We um, even before I was at the gym, we used to hang out before I joined the gym uh, officially. So um, you know, it's sad to see um, how he reacted to everything, but you know, everybody's got to do what they got to do. So yeah, no, no. hope the best for him. Yeah, so how do you think uh, in the future, hopefully he does, how do you think he's going to do when he moves up to heavyweight? Because I know when he moved up weight, uh, he was still at the gym. So you saw him, like, how, how was he at heavyweight? Yeah, he was looking good. Uh, the last time I seen him at the gym, he was, what, 255? He's looking real solid. Yeah, so last few things here. Uh, do you have any specific opponent in mind for your next fight? No, no opponent. I, it's so hard to get people to fight me, so I just I accept any fight, really. Uh, we just usually my manager is like just find somebody, but that's a lot easier said than done. Yeah, yeah and you said it's hard for uh, people, like it's hard for you to find people to fight you. But I know you don't like that, but like in a sense, is that kind of like great for you because like it shows that they're scared of like. They're low key kind of scared of you to fight you and everything. I don't it's, know. It, it's a it's a double edged sword. Like it's yeah. it's nice feeling, you know. It is smart for them not to want to fight me. Yeah. Like, but um, this is a fight business. I want to fight. Like their people are holding me back from what I wanted to do because you know they don't want to take a loss. But you know they're in the wrong business if you're scared to fight. So that's why I I fight anybody and everybody. Most of the time my opponents pull out and the organizations are scrambling to get get somebody like I wouldn't even I almost didn't even fight this last one yeah um my god pulled out oh no they never even found an opponent they wanted me in Dallas but they never nobody would take the fight um it's like getting us almost two weeks out nobody would take the fight nobody would take the fight my manager's like man it's not looking good like they're they're desperately calling everybody they found a guy in Brazil who said he would take the fight and then they were like, oh, we're going to write up the contract. And then the next day he calls and says he has COVID. So that fell through. So it's looking like I wasn't going to get a fight. And then my manager calls me and says, like, hey, uh, Steve's opponent pulled out. So they're going to make them fight you. It's like, they're because he didn't want to fight me. But they're like, no, we got to we got to make him fight. If he wants to be on the card, he's got to fight Breezy. So they, they cornered him into the fight. Because uh, we were supposed to originally fight in Belton, Texas, in what was that? Uh, I want to say like September or something. When did I fight in September? Uh, not my last fight, but the fight before that. Uh, was, oh, that was it July? July? Yeah. July. Well, I was supposed to fight him in July. And he pulled out two weeks before the fight. And then they found Colossio, the guy that uh, the body slammed to finish. Yeah, they found him the week of the fight. Wow! So what? what wow! That's crazy. All that change. How, what is that like for you with all that change going on two weeks? Uh, I'm years? used to it now. This is ever since my second amateur fight. This has been. This is how it's been. Nobody ever shows up. Uh, usually, if uh, I've only think maybe like three times, the original opponent actually showed up out of like all the fights that I've had. Um, it's usually like the first guy they get, he, he'll he accept, then pull out, accept, pull out. Um, it got to a point where people here didn't want to buy tickets from me because they didn't know if I was going to get pulled from the card or not because it's happened before, you know, sell all these tickets and then I end up not fighting because uh, one time guy didn't even show up to the uh, weigh-ins. Uh, that happened as an amateur and then it happened as a pro. I flew out to Memphis one time to fight and the guy didn't even show up to weigh-ins, was on the phone telling them he was coming, never showed up. Um, I fought in, I flew to Detroit, had the guy, um, didn't send his blood work in, but showed up on the plane, like it showed up with his paperwork in his hand, like, hey, I, I got my stuff. Like, that's not how it works. So that guy canceled. Um, I had a guy, Cancel me at weigh-ins. I was, um, uh, I think I was only like a pound or two over, and I was gonna fight Darren Crickshank, uh, UFC vet, 
in Verizon event. Um, and he bitched out, made a whole big deal about it that I had missed. I was only off by like one pound and he freaked out. And they didn't even give me the full amount of time. So I was supposed to have 30 more minutes to cut. Yeah. And he was bitching and complaining. So they made me come back and I was literally like one pound over. I think not even one pound probably. And then he was like bitching about it, saying it was unprofessional, but he missed weight multiple times in the UFC himself. And then he, um, him and his wife were making a little big old uh, fuss about it. And then he was like, um, so the promoter wanted the fight to happen. He was like, we were the main event. So he wanted to like make it happen. And they're, they're trying to figure it out. And he's like, all right, well, if uh, me and Winker at the store and uh, the promoter calls, he's like, well, he said he'll take the fight if you show up at 160 tomorrow, uh, 30 minutes before the fight started. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so uh, Wink was like, man, don't do that shit. Like, don't even worry about it. Like, it is what it is. And I was like, nah, fuck that. I'm, I'm gonna, I get on the phone. I'm like, no, fuck that. Tell him I'll be there. I'm gonna wake, wait, and I'm gonna fuck him up. And so, uh, the next day, I didn't, they were expecting me not to eat or anything and just starve myself to the next day. I rehydrated, I ate a little bit, rehydrated, and then cut weight again the next day. So I cut weight two days in a row. I finished the cut, then did a, turned around and did another cut the next day. Uh, showed up to the weigh in made weight the promoter was like freaking out he was like oh my god i've never seen anyone do this before he was shaking my hand he was like oh you're awesome and then crookshank walks in and he sees me on the scale and he freaked he's like oh oh uh, i'm not fighting i i got rid of that deal i got i got rid of that deal i'm not fighting no more i'm not fighting and everybody in the back was like what the fuck like all that shit y'all was talking last night y'all made this whole big old ordeal out of it and you made up this little bullshit stipulation for me to show up. I did it. I'm here, ready to fight. And he started bitching out. And then one of the guys was like, like he's not trying to fight, but he brought his fight bag. Like, his fight bag's right here. So he definitely didn't think you were going to make that weight then. That's why he was acting. No, he, he was, yeah, he was he was shook. He didn't, want, he didn't want no parts of that fight. Yeah, what man, what a crazy event for you that's been. And I, I, at the end of the day, though, it will, it will work out probably for you after everything that's happened. Yeah. And I just got to stay the course. Um, good things have been happening. I just, uh, just stick to it. I don't really trip out a lot. I've had to deal with so much of this stuff like my whole career. So I've, I've gotten used to it. I don't take it as hard as I used to. Yeah. So I just stay, keep grinding and uh, just stay ready. Yeah, no doubt. And, hopefully it gets better this year for you and last thing here man thanks for coming on again so i know you want to stay active and always be active what is the goal of this year for like the amount of times you're trying to fight for 2022 you already fought once so i know yeah, I'm, many more times. i want to fight as many times as possible at least three more times yeah. at three least more. yeah at least i want to sit up if I could get a fight like next week uh, next month i'll fight next month i'm ready to, i'm ready to turn around I'm ready to go. I, I want to get five fights in a year. I would love to get that many fights, but that's fucking, I've usually got maybe two or three fights a year just because people run so much. Yeah. It's crazy how, like, I know people, like, all over the country, like, with connections to different organizations, you know, there's people, like, the whole East Coast won't even touch me. <laughs> <laughs> Say they call next week and they, say they call this week and say we want you to fight next week. You taking it? I take it. <laughs> oh my, you're hey, good for you, man. I, that's I like I love those kind of fighters that fight anywhere, anytime. Great for you. It's gonna pay off for you. And thanks again for coming on, man. It was really great speaking with you. Thank you guys. Appreciate you guys. Yeah. If you want to thank any sponsors, shout out any social media supporters. Uh, just shout out to uh, Jackson Wink, all my teammates. Uh. We got a lot of guys coming up. We got a lot of good fighters. Um, we got, uh, I think, was the Bellator event next week on the 19th or something like that? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think we have fight on uh, Bellator. Uh, we got two guys. I think we got three guys on that card. Uh, but we, um, we got a lot of fights coming up. We got a lot of fighters doing a lot of good things. So uh, everybody be on the lookout and uh, follow me on Instagram, Chris Breezy MMA. Sounds good, man. Thanks for coming on. We'll be we'll be tuned in next fight. All right.
Have a good one. There you one. go. Peace out.